I'm just curious in your, um, I guess you'd say in your, since your spiritual, since, since you got into that and until now, how has your relationship with the, the mind changed or has it? When you say mind, you mean like thinking aspect of it. Do you, do you mean thinking? Uh, yeah, so, so I'm predominantly uh, thinking. So, um, sometimes, you know, people will get caught up in thoughts and, you know, even their whole identity is based on their thoughts and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And, and then, uh, you know, some, some other people can kind of just see it as thought arising and know that the mind is just, it, it has its activities, you know, and, mm -hmm. and they're at peace with that. And I'm wondering, you know, from your point of view, yeah, uh, if you will. Yeah, sure. I have two answers, yeah. <laughs> which is, which is the case most of the time. Uh -huh. <laughs> the, um, so if I go into the story of, of me, and I remember back. Firstly, I would just say that memory is a very strange thing. So I don't know if memory was ever created to be that accurate. Like, uh, so I can't be sure of what it was like when I got into this subject when I was 20. I was kind of into this subject before, but I directly got into Buddhism when I was 20. So really, like before it had been through talking with people and thinking and you know, different books but, and philosophies. But, but spirituality, the first thing was Buddhism when I was 20. And um, yeah, and I'd say there's been a radical shift. Like, you know, when I first got into this subject, I didn't even realize that I was thinking. You know, I, th I was so identified with thoughts that I thought my thoughts were reality. So if yeah. I saw something and thought they're angry or they're bad, I just, I didn't even realize that that was a thought that Lisa was having. I just thought that was true. I didn't notice. Oh. So, so the, like a huge difference. So now there's kind of this sense continuously of that which is thoughtless, this timelessness, like this recognition that what we truly are is timeless. So from going from 20 years ago where I didn't even really realize I thought, I just thought it was the way things were, and then mm -hmm. realizing it was thinking and then detaching from the thinking and realizing that the thinking and the feeling are really in con con connected like so all of these different things and then now there is thoughts and feelings that appear but there is this still timelessness in which they're appearing in so they're no longer the way in which life is there's something that comes and goes and sometimes there's an intense thought or emotion and there is a going down path of not belief but just getting triggered or getting activated and yeah the thought taking up lots of room but it's, there, there, uh, there seems to be a over here at least um a big difference between getting kind of caught up in a thought and just having a thought mm. um I, I don't know if that's what you're referring to where sometimes it will take you down a I know I kind of interrupted you there, but... Yeah, what I was referring to is basically if I get triggered by something and yeah. then there is an emotional reaction, but I don't know if I ever believe in it anymore. I don't... It's kind of like there is a, a, a trigger, so something happens with normally with another human, um, there is a disagreement maybe and then there maybe it's a crying or a big emotional reaction 
But I don't know if that's ever taken to be truth. There's just it just can sometimes have strong energy in it, like a you know a big emotion or um, a discomfort. But there's another part that that is just very present as well. That's very still and very present. But then there's this other energy that can come up so a big emotional reaction i suppose but i don't know if it's really ever taken to be a reality anymore it could be old seeking energy in it like a seeking to try to get the other person to do something or get them to come for me or i don't know whatever it is the seeking energy and that's like old seeking patterns of the body but i don't know if it's ever really believed to have any reality like the so, only reality is the timeless. Yeah, so it's kind of just a product of your, you know, the three pounds in your head, right? That is computing and whatnot and trying to protect you and. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you, you don't necessarily. Yeah. So yeah, so these, yeah, these, yeah, these instruments are trained to behave in certain ways, genetically or socially. So there, there is these responses that come up. Yeah, and then um, there is pain that comes with that, like physical. Like my emotions are very physical now. So, and the thoughts feel very physical. So actually, when you said that, like the brain. Like, um, I sometimes question, and actually I think even scientists question this as well, as to whether thinking actually happens in the brain. Because it feels very so, emotional, like when I ha like very f emotional and physical. So when I have a disagreement, that's when I think I have the most emotional reaction, is a disagreement with someone, I think, with another human. Wow. I can't think of other things that really... Um, Create much, but yeah. So disagreement with a human um, is um, is it feels more so than thinking. So I'm not really thinking you're an ass or you're doing something wrong. It's more like there is a emotion, say in the heart, and then the sort of speaking comes out of that emotion in the heart. So it's not really a narrative about them so much. There can be a narrative of how best to navigate it, maybe going on. But the, it's more like there is this emotion in the heart of feeling unseen or unloved or um, not heard. And it feels very physical. And then I'm not sure really what happens because I think also we're very physical beings. So then I think you get affected by the other person's emotions. So then it kind of becomes this like one energy of both of you together when you get into these, these heated dynamics. Yeah, so do you think there's a, a difference between thought that uh, is, uh, for lack of a better term, identified with as a person versus, say, you know, I got a, I, I don't know, just something really mundane, like, mm. uh, I think, I, I think my student, yeah, or um, different kind of, I don't know, I yeah. mean, it's all thought. But there seems to be like a more, like you were saying, uh, identified stuff, yeah. Body sensation. Yeah. When it's, when you when you feel threatened or. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think like, I think when you're really identified with that person, so when there isn't the connection to who you truly are or that stillness, then I think there is a lot of seeking energy that arises. So you have that feeling of feeling threatened or feeling vulnerable or unheard. And then there is a lot of seeking energy that arises that tries to avoid that. So a lot of narrative and story about what a terrible person the other person is, or they shouldn't do this, or they should do that, or you need to do this, or or um, life is so unfair, everything bad happens. There's big narratives that arise in order to try to avoid like the rawness of feeling 
these more vulnerable emotions or defences like trying to be better than the other person, trying to be more enlightened than the other person, trying to um, put the other person down or get power. You know, there can be all these types of seeking energies which I think are like a more based around identification. But it kind of becomes yeah. a fine line, like it's like they become th thinner and th thinner, like it becomes a fine line, you begin to forget about these things. Like So now with myself personally, I just don't separate it. So what I say is like old seeking energies might arise, but I don't really think like is this identified or is this not identified? There is, there is just energies arising and then they're looked would you at say and you're... Need to more aware of it like you're, you're more aware oh this is a seeking energy you know yeah it's just happened yeah yeah uh, as opposed to before like you said when you no i don't think that i would label it it's a seeking energy actually i don't think i would i say that to people to try to yeah. show them or tell them where i am or not or what's happening here but i think actually in the moment i don't i don't describe it to myself in any way as this is a seeking energy or if this is identified or not identified or this is free or not free I think I'm just very much with the experience of what's happening so if there is a big sadness arising I'm very there's a there's an intimacy with that sadness and um, a focusing on that sadness and then there might be some narrative around the sad sadness um, or well, there might be the mind activity might be trying to go into that sadness to explore it to an extent. But I don't think there's any real, I don't really think of it in terms of is it identified or isn't it identified or is this personal seeking or not personal seeking. It's just something that's arising. Like I don't think I'm trying to work out where I am. I don't, I don't care. I care. The only way I care, and you could maybe call this identification or not, is not to be dishonest to people that listen to me. That's the only thing. So it's like trying to be as honest about the process that happens here. But it, to me, I really don't care. I do not care at all about that. What, what is it that you don't care about? Can you? That I don't care about where Lisa is or not, about seeking or not seeking or identified or not see identified. I just don't even think about those things. So the only thing that I do care about is expressing that to people, which I think I do all the time. In fact, maybe do it too much. <laughs> so, so it's not a matter of, you know, for you. Um, am I trying to say separating yourself from it or anything? You, yeah. You're feeling it fully, but you just don't take it as necessarily real or um, mm. part of what you really core, you know, the core of you, it's, yeah. it's more of an arising it's that a you happening, know will pass. Yeah. And it's a happening just like when the joy and the excitement is happening. And but, but you, you fully dive into it, though. Yeah. I mean, and maybe it, not, obviously, but you allow it to. Yeah, allow it. And then there might be some thinking about it and reflecting on it. If um, if that needs to be, you know, if you're in a argument with someone or a disagreement with someone, there might need to be reflection about your behavior or their behavior. So there's reflection. Okay. And if it's strong and persists, persists, there might be reflection and a diving into it. Like there's a process that I do with difficult emotions of asking what it wants or doesn't want and feeling it. And, so there's definitely not like a suppression of thought or anything like that going on. Just mm. if I was, I wouldn't like... know. <laughs> oh. so, no, I mean, like, you know, how some people will say, you know, you got to keep those thoughts. Stop thinking like that. You know, um, I'm, I'm trying to think about stuff less or, you know, you don't you don't try to. No, Stop I don't try mind. to do that. But if there's like a trauma that arises, then I might uh, move my mind very present. Not all the time, it depends. So if there is like, um, because my theory is, is that sometimes traumas are too strong. And you, 
it's good to explore traumas, but it's it's not good to um, always go too much into them. So say if I'm out and um, I'm in the middle of nowhere, like when when I'm in France, the, there's often hunters when I go out walking with the dogs. Um, and sometimes they can really give you a fright because they can be, you know, like right in the bush next to you or they can run out chasing the dogs are chasing the boars. There's lots of hunters in the south of France. And, um, and it can send the body into, you know, like a, a you know, a bit of a fright. It's not actually very strong for me. I'm just giving this as an example. But yeah. there's a good chance, like, after that, I might just put put the attention very much into the world rather than too much into the body. Like, I have this different ways of working with the body in different states because if the trauma is, sometimes when the trauma is quite a fight, flight, a please, fight, fight, a please, or freeze, if it's one of those four, Sometimes it's best not to give it too much attention, so then there's just a moving out of it. It's best to give that attention more when you're in a very safe, quiet space mm. and doing it gently and bringing yourself in and out of it. Um, sometimes when it's quite strong, so if you're in a big triggering situation, if you go too into it, you can get stuck in it. Yeah. Like the body goes into, I don't know, like... Um, like it can get, not for me very often, but you can, you can trigger it into like a, where the body just takes over and it goes into this fright. I've seen it happen to people when working with people. And it's, um, it's better to gently ease into it. Yeah. I see. And, but, and you, you know, with your teaching and everything, you, or not, I mean, with your uh, non-dual experience and all that, you probably tend to take them less personally, I'm guessing. It's not, it's not really an activity, because who would take them less personally? Like, so it's it's just something that naturally occurs, and I presume that is because of all these experiences that's happened, but it's not really like I'm actively trying to take things less personally, it's just an occurrence that happens. Right, but I mean, with with the the realization, yeah, that, that that the person is kind of a mental construct, yeah, or, or, or I don't know if I'm wording this yeah. quite right, but maybe it helps to to not to to not take the story so yeah serious. Not that it's an activity, but maybe that's helped to condition, yeah way you deal with things or something yeah. like that yeah something like that <laughs> i'm not sure yeah okay. but yeah yeah no i know i know what you mean but yeah I see. okay well thank you very much for that uh, it's very, pleasure uh, but nice talking to you i yeah. i've watched you a lot on uh on the youtube and i've uh today i was, I was you know seeing that it was a live stream and then i realized it was skype so i got skype and Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, nice to be able to speak to you. Maybe you can call in again sometime. Oh, sounds good. How often do you do this? I do it every Sunday at 6 p.m. French time, which is, where are you in America? Uh, Seattle, Washington. So I think that's like um, nine hours Coast. before. So that would be, oh, I can't do my math now, so six. Yeah, probably in the morning. Yeah. Like nine or 10 a.m. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Oh, nice. Yeah. Thank you, Bert. Yeah. Have a lovely day. All right. You too. Thank you. Yeah. Bye.